just as well at keeping their opponents at a distance. Though, you could argue that because of Robin's superior airspeed, he'll be able to punish, uh, he'll be able to punish stocks a lot more consistently. Hmm, so right now, um, they're going to PS to an absolute classic. Okay, so why not? It's, a, it's Starter Stadium. It's the one, it's the one and only. Mm hmm Um... Ooh, I'm excited to see this. Um, we'll do a double three-stock to stay on the game and continue with it. A University of Colorado one-stock and that'll be it for William & Mary. Right, here we go. Out of Rim and Xandapanda. They're prepped. This could very well mean uh, mean everything. Of course, Xandapanda is in a much better position than William and Mary uh, due to uh, Xanda only needing to take two stocks in one of the games that is coming up. That's it. Could be easier said than done, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know, we just see how um, Arcfire is so good at pressuring um, the shield. Um, Outer Rim using it quite often. Um, Nair, of course, is a really good move, and oh, that was a good option. Wow, gonna steal that for my own gameplay. <laughs> yeah. So as a as a Robin player, uh, what uh, what makes you think? What do you think about this matchup and how it's been progressing? Uh, you think Outer Rim has a uh, has been playing what how you would expect, or is he implementing new things that uh, are catching your eye? Um, might be me being a little bit biased towards Robin, but um, I really like Outer Rim as a Robin player. I think he's a really, really good Robin player and really utilizing a lot of Robin's moves. Um, especially, um, I love how he used Nosferatu. It is a grab that um, you don't actually have to you use, not for healing, but just to grab someone, just to cover a shield, and I think he used it really well. Ooh, very cheeky spot dodge from Xandapanda, and one that was absolutely needed. His shield was devastatingly low after the Arc Thunder. And Robin has plenty of shield break setups, not only with the uh, Arc Fire, which as you mentioned is great for shield pressure, but also Arc Thunder and its damage and how fast some of uh, Robin's other projectiles can be, like the st level 1 Thunder, only makes things that much more effective. But Outer Rim takes the first stop with a jump read back air. Mm -hmm. You know, Robin with smash attacks in the air, back air is definitely one of the strongest ones. And we saw um, Outer Rim is so good at reading um, Xandapano when he jumps, catching it twice so far in this game. So many jump reads are coming out from Outer Rim. He's really committed to trying to not get hit by that and certainly not get caught by any of these jump reads. Or uh, not trying to keep going for jump reads, I mean. But with the Nosferatu, Nosferatu there helping out in terms of survivability, the higher the percent difference, the more health that you will regain from Nosferatu. Man, he's going yeah. crazy. That's guy's okay. <laughs> And I really like um, Outer Rim's usage of Nosferatu. Um, again, using it as a method of almost like a tomahawk rather than using it for the purposes of healing. But that is a stock down. Uh, now, Xandapanda, or Outer Rim, is now on his uh, basically his team's life stock. Should he lose this one, of which that's definitely a hell of a start, uh, that will be the that will spell the end for William and Mary's attempts at winning this crew battle. So it's all on Xanda, or it's all, to do this for Colorado. Mm -hmm. But Outer Rim is looking very, very strong. Right, absolutely. And you know something that I really noticed about Robin, um, seeing um, Outer Rim play and um, thinking about my own play style. Um, Robins like to condition a player to do other methods other than neutral get up. If you neutral get up, you're gonna get hit by um, the arc fire, which is normally like the go-to option for Robins. You either roll and then in the first stock, um, outer rim use Nosferatu, or um, 
you would jump, which, you know, Outerim covered as well. Um, clearly, we see how uh, well Outerim is really doing with um, covering ledge and edge guarding Violet. But um, Xandapan is doing a really great job that um, Artfire has a lot of ending lag, so you could do a lot of stuff. You could punish Artfire pretty well, and um, Xandapan is doing that well. Man, these Nosferatu's are so clutch in order to make his survivability that much more. And he's with Eleven Sword on deck and the call out on the neutral air dodge. Outer Rim has started to put together a massive string that not only makes uh, makes him lap or makes Xandapanda lap him in percent, but also gives him that much greater of a chance to end this game. He was looking for the jump call out and he missed it because of the arc fire. Perfect spacing just to hit neutral hang as well. Uh oh. Yeah, he had to buffer the roll there if the down smash would have clipped him otherwise. Wow, is he dead? And I think that was enough to take it. Wow. Huge. Absolutely, absolutely huge. Now, Outer Rim has made it. It. William and Mary is still in it, more or less. Like, they are within striking range if. As long as he wins this next game with a uh, three with a three stock, he needs a three stock. It'll be a tie. Wow, Ooh. that's tall a tall order, and I guess all Xander needs to do is take one stock. Now he's taken one before. So he, all he needs is one stock. But with how these Anasferatus have been going. Outer Rim has increased his survivability so much throughout uh, Game 1, and honestly, I'd be surprised if we see anything else, though it's far easier to take one stock than to take three. Absolutely, and so much pressure is on Outer Rim right now. Um, trying so hard to get three stocks for their team, but this is by far one of, one of the, and if not the closest, set that I've commentated here at EGFC. Um, everything's on the line right now. Xander Panda really just needs to get a single stock in order for um, them to proceed forward. That's such a tall, like it, it feels so much heavier than it could be because like, oh yeah, just when you go into the game, don't worry about winning. I mean, try to win, of course. But when you go into there, all your only goal is to take one stock, just one. And that, that like that amount of pressure, can suddenly be a little bit. Uh, it, it can be a little bit detrimental towards Zandapanda's play if he just starts throwing out uh, things that will kill just to try and get that one stock. Robin can punish this incredibly hard, and Outer Rim looks like he is in top form but a three stock is still a three stock and it's not easy to do that with how like yeah, how close game two how game one was um outer rim switched character to female robin which is actually a really big power up um i don't know why but um maybe it's just placebo but female robin gives me an extra uh, boost of energy so Really looking forward to see how Outer Rim will be able to potentially three stock or how Xandapanda will get a stock. I mean, with Psy with Psychic Soldier playing in the background now, it's perfect the time to, to pump yourself up. And Xandapanda was on an incredible start, but yet another Nosferatu even to the game up real quickly. Oh, reverse Nair. Okay, he's. He's, he's doing a little bit of style. Is that... No, he saves his jump, and uh, the Sword of the Creator it has plenty of range on it. Really Thanks. nice catch on... Um, I believe it was Arcfire? Yes. Um, but... Yeah, the Arcfire Tome. Oop, one. Oh, man. It's... <laughs> it's nerve-wracking. 88% is certainly... Uh, it's not a, t it's a lot, but you know, you cleaned off 20% and, and suddenly Xandapanda just keeps having more and more work cut out for them. Oh man, he's mm -hmm. looking for... 
No Woo! way, right? Okay, he used his jump. Ooh, he only has one Elwyn left. Oh, okay, he got it. Good recover high. And he beats out the Arc Thunder as well. So very minimal amount of tomes on Xanda or on uh, Outer Rim. But Xanda is isn't able to push. Oh, that's it. That's it. Natalie that is the end. It. Oh man. Oh. oh. That is. That's gonna be the end of the of, of the tournament life for uh, for William and Mary. But he will. They'll keep playing it out to the end, perhaps end in another two stock, but it's Oh, uh, that's that's a that's a rough way to go, but it, to have to be so close, but yet so far. Mm -hmm. Um It's really funny to see um, the chat already saying GG or um good job, um William and Mary, even though the match is not finished yet. Um definitely um really really good win on um colorado really good play on william and mary great job um outer rim and santa panda for it yeah games three and four really spelled a, a very different story but you know outer rim keeps pushing he keeps playing his heart out 135 in a blink of an eye after losing his second stock and you know it's only we got him. Okay, no, he's disengaging. There it is. There oh, it is. man. Man, that hits so, that hits so deep. Robin's up there is pretty good. Robin cheats, but not enough. Robin. Uh, yeah, Robin's a uh, slept on character, especially online. Like, look how deep this hitbox is. Look how. Look, look this up there is crazy. Ooh, where, uh. where was uh, Violet? <laughs> where was Violet? That was not even close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Either way, it was incre an incredibly, incredibly close set for uh, for uh, Colorado and William and Mary, ending in a one point difference. But a final storming comeback was not enough as Colorado maintains their stance and punches their ticket into semis. Incredible job from both of you! Like it, amazing seasons, uh, amazing season of Will and Mary, and incredible play from both teams. But Colorado will be moving on. Mm hmm. Honestly, that was a really great match to watch. I'm sure everyone in the chat. I don't know why, but um, I lagged out again. But I'm sure everyone thought it was a really great match um, for everyone. Um, great job. Yeah. All right, and uh, as we get our couple final replays here, as yet that final kill, I, of course, incredibly good games, incredibly great, but that is not the end of the action for us. If you thought 15 to 14 was incredibly close, then hopefully we see a repeat performance in our final uh, crew battle of the night, that being Mississippi State against Quinnipiac University. So it's... It's going to be a slugfest, seed three for seed six. All of these games, all of these uh, players and teams are incredibly close in skill level, regardless from one to eight. So all mm -hmm. that is a matter of, uh, all that will be coming to you right after we get the teams ready. So we're going to be going to a quick break. But man, don't touch that dial. There's going to be some more smash action right, right now, right soon. <laughs> <laughs>